about three hours of listening to what the finance minister calls in Punto budget. And the theme was a stronger economy for jobs and prosperity. Well, this government says that it's focused on some six pillars uh, to help develop the economy uh, in the 2019 budget. In, in, in his introduction, introductory speech, he did admit that it's quite hard and actually mentioned that it's a fact and that the, the system is hard and that they have to take tough decisions to get the country running according to him properly again. He also admits that current resources are limited to meet every need or potential of every Ghanaian, but government is committed to making sure uh, that we achieve that prosperity they hope for the nation. I've still got Mr. Henry Tremi, he's with iWatch Africa, and Mr. Um, Anthony Morrison with Ghana Agribusiness Chamber. We've actually been watching uh, this budget together. There have been interesting moments, and um, especially in, in, in the last uh, 20 minutes, we saw that there was a bit of, uh, I won't call it chaos, mm -hmm. but it was a bit of um, an unsettled moment there for the minister when the minority will not allow him to speak. But let me start with you, um, Mr. Tremi. What is your general impression of what you heard for the 2019 uh, financial year. Thank you very much, Benis. I, I think um, there's a lot of um, stuff in there to chew on. I, I personally think that the fact that the government is committed in, in continuing with the prudent measures as we're enshrined in the IMF mm. program is mm. quite laudable. Mm -hmm. it, it, it gives um, confidence to the international community mm -hmm. that we're not just going to do anything anyhow. Mm -hmm. And we are likely to have um, a lot of facilities coming in mm -hmm. at a rate, mm -hmm. uh, with the rates going down. Mm -hmm. I'm also very quite happy with the 180 million Ghana City allocated to the Special Prosecutor's Office. Exactly. Um, we were I, all looking out for that. I mean, going into this budget, we had heard uh, quite a number of people on issues on taxation uh, and many others. So it, it, it is interesting that you, you took note of sure, that. Sure, sure. So um, we hope that um, the disbursements will be done quite quickly mm. to ensure that the office functions and, and, and then anybody who is um, engaging in any financial more mm. practices are brought to, to book. Mm. I, I also think that there's, there is a focus now on external financing. Mm. In the 2017 budget, the focus was to finance the deficit through domestic until the mid-year budget changed that focus. And this budget has been quite clear. It's going to finance the, the deficit through external financing. And I think it is, it is quite laudable because it's going to allow some space for private sector to be able to borrow from the domestic market so that government is not going to compete with the, 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 the private sector for, for, uh, at a domestic fund. So there are a couple of um, very good things mm. that I heard from this. But you, you did mention the IMF, and even though we know that we are exiting that particular program or sure. arrangement, he did mention that they will ensure irreversibility of gains made through the IMF mm. program and consolidate uh, them as well through uh, reformed measures. Okay, and, and he did mention that Ghana will continue to be, or as Ghana is a member of the IMF, they will continue to engage uh, the IMF and, and see how well we can yes. uh, uh, gain from that particular uh, partnership. Let's take you back to Parliament now uh, as proceedings continue. Uh, honourable members, honourable members, that will be that will be in accordance with the decorum of Parliament. It's not a speech. And no, and and uh, uh, uh. Uh, the speaker, I should thank you for stepping out of the ordinary and granting me the indulgence. Mr. Speaker, growing up, 
a dance which ushers in order. dawn. The tie is not in a haste to walk into that dance. <laughs> Therefore, Mr. Speaker, we have heard the finance minister and his economic renewal prophecy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I didn't know there was pride in Borowe. Now I know. <laughs> and Mr. Speaker, we look forward to a healthy debate. We will not reduce this to a bundle of semantics. We will not respond to the repetitions. But Mr. Speaker, the Ghanaian economy is doing well, even in the face of distressed businesses, growing unemployment. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you can only adjourn us. I thank you for that. <laughs> Hey, speaker, all done. Hey, speaker, let me let me thank my colleagues. Let me thank my colleagues for recognizing the sumptuous meal served by the finance minister. <laughs> By giving him, by giving him a starting position. The speaker, in recognition of the sumptuous meal served by the finance minister, they all rose and gave him a standing ovation. With some placards that have been turned upside down. <laughs> I thought the House had agreed that we should migrate from festooning the chamber with placards. I thought we had agreed. But as a speaker, we recognize the principle. We recognize the principle. Oh, the principle. Oh, I thought there was a smooth flow when the minority leader had his turn. Please, let there be a smooth flow. Mr. Speaker, so as you said, by quoting Order 143, after the presentation of the budget, date on it will stand adjourned for a minimum of three days. And accordingly, we shall respect that. Mr. Speaker, let me take this opportunity to inform colleagues that at the Business Committee this morning, we have agreed to have a sitting of this house on Saturday in the lead up to the holding of the delegates conference. It's a decision that we have taken. And we recognize the importance of the delegates' conference. We will not do anything on the members of your participation in that Congress. So, Mr. Speaker, that is the decision of the business committee. I'm just stating this so that members would take cognizance of it on Saturday morning. I'm saying that nothing will be done to imperil the Congress of the NDC. 
which is why we are going to have a very early morning session. The speaker, having said that, the speaker. Regarding, regarding what to do during the debate, we shall all wait until we get there. We intend really to begin the debate on Tuesday. As for the initial commentaries, the good book can always be right when it says those who have ears should listen. Ghanaians have heard, they have listened, and Mr. Speaker, they are most impressed. Thank you very much. Honourable members, thank you very much for, for coming on all honourable members order. Honourable members, thank you very much for attending punctually today. I hope you will come in the same numbers and so punctually tomorrow as well. This house will start again till tomorrow, 10 o'clock, in the forenoon. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying here on the Joy News channel. The budget has been read. We still have a team stationed at Parliament, definitely to bring you reactions uh, to all the key areas that were factored in the 2019 budget. Uh, but let me uh, just a way of uh, reminder. Uh, the minister did mention that the 2019 budget will focus on six strategic pillars. That's infrastructure, agri modernization, industrialization, entrepreneurship, improving efficiency in revenue mobilization and protecting the public purse and social intervention. Before we went to Parliament, uh, we briefly telling me your impressions about uh, the 2019 budget. Yes, so I mean, the areas that the minister covered, uh, as you rightly just mentioned them, are quite significant and, and it encompasses mm -hmm. all the other aspects that we need to propel us into a higher growth. And I think the, the key is implementation. Uh, it, it looks beautiful and it sounds nice to hear them, you know, with the innovative thinking around revenue mobilization, innovative thinking around the financing of some of these big uh, social interventions. Mm -hmm. But the key, and I think the most important thing we have to look at is implementation. Let me come to you, uh, Mr. Morrison, with the Ghana Agribusiness Chamber. I saw you, you know, very alert when it got to the part of agri-modernization, especially when he mentioned that uh, they are hoping to grow at 7.3% uh, rate, the agri sector for 2019. That's the projected growth rate. Yeah. Uh, so currently, according to CADEP, uh, CADEP's core on the continent, we are at uh, 4.3. Mm. Uh, and I think that uh, to do such a projection calls for a bold step. Um, the key six areas have agriculture permeating all infrastructure, industrialization, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. Yeah. We have agriculture social protection mm. systems and um, also improving efficiency that also have agriculture in it. So I can see agriculture permeating all the six sectors. Exactly. Now, um, on the issues of uh, local seeds, uh, post harvest laws, fertilizer mm -hmm. subsidies, mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. that, yes. These are areas where I was expecting, especially uh, the local seed industry. This is the engine of agriculture in terms of crops. Okay, if we're talking about increasing yields per acre, we need to develop our own indigenous local seed industry. We need to invest in it. Most of the uh, seeds that are currently being used for the PFJ are all imported. Only few are being done by Sari. Uh, then also we have uh, WACI, which is the West Africa Center for Crop Improvement, and uh, some other uh, uh, few companies. But we need to develop, in, uh, invest in that critical. It's very important because we can sit down and import hybrid seeds just to, you know, you know, uh, as, no, we can't do that. Mm. We need to actually make deliberate policies and invest in them. Then talking about post-harvest technology, 
seriously, we produce a lot. Mm. And I was saying before uh, the Honorable Minister came on it. Mm. It's, like, it's like we need to also develop some way, appropriate technologies in solving some of these post-harvest mm. losses. And he did mention that industrialization will focus mainly on adding value to agriculture produce. Yeah, the adding value is just one aspect of the mm. value chain, which is the midstream. But we're talking about the downstream, okay? okay? We need the uh, easy, uh, simpler tools like planters, mm -hmm. uh, okay? It's very critical because it gives you the depth at which the, the seed goes into the hole. And if you, you're using cutlass, and because sometimes you are yeah. tired, mm -hmm. so or when you start, you have the energy so you can push in harder, or sometimes when you are getting to the end of it, mm -hmm. you are tired, so mm -hmm. you can't. So we need to have precision yeah. farming in place. Okay. And these are very critical points. Fertilizer, I've been privy to sitting at very important uh, meetings with government and international stakeholders and development partners just last week talking about expansion of the fertilizer subsidies. Yes, these are very good policies. Are you for it? Do you, do you, do you support government's decision to subsidize fertilizers or any uh, form of uh, agric uh, subsidies in any way? Uh, subsidies and in itself uh, has, a, has a dichotomous uh, situation, okay? But um, mm. with these subsidies has... Apologies, uh, we quickly have to go to Parliament. Michael E. Kojo is speaking to the Chairman of Parliament's Finance Committee. I'm looking at the deficit 4.2%. I'm impressed because that has been our bane. Over the years, we we'll would spend what we don't have. So now we are living within our means, cutting our coat according to our growth. What I'm impressed about is that I see capital expenditure. So the focus of this 2019 budget, having had macro stability, having had uh, enough social spending, now the next level would be for, to see infrastructure spend, and this budget addresses that adequately. Right, now uh, there are a couple of surprises one U turn at least uh, on the issue of the tax bracket. Yeah, I, I think that's a listening government. You introduce a, a new band, and then um, you, you have people complaining, mm. and then you listen. Okay, so they've gone back, they revised it, and and, and uh, increased uh, 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 the band. I think it's a good thing. But I, is I, this I not evidence that perhaps they didn't think it through well enough, or no. didn't consult no. No, tax well enough before they? Uh, 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 Tax, tax ad administration is not straightforward, as you know. Okay, when you introduce a tax, on the one hand it brings in revenue, on the other hand it's a cost to businesses. So there are two sides of any tax policy, and so after implementing it, then you see the full effects. And I, I applaud the government, the Minister of Finance, for going back to the drawing table and revisiting this issue in particular. Mm. Right now, uh, we're also seeing a new format to how the budget statement was read. We have these five pillars. Uh, what it meant was that for those who were making notes and expecting to see some information per sector, it's all a little bit mixed up now. So no, 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 uh, pre previously, pre 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 previously, um, you had policy initiatives which sat somewhere. Now they want the ministries to own these initiatives. Mm -hmm. So rather than all lumping all of them together, policy initiatives as if it is the central government, the office of the president or the ministry of finance run, uh, rolling them out. Now you want them to sit with the ministries for the ministries, departments and agencies to own them. Right. I want to thank you. We will obviously be talking lots more in the coming days, uh, but we appreciate your time for now. Sure. Um, and of course, Member of Parliament for New Job in Mark Isibe. Thank you very much. Who is also on the finance um, committee of yeah. parliament? I'll give you this. Uh, thank you, thank you thank so you much for joining us. Absolutely. So now we've heard the plan for 2019. Positive? Um, you know, as usual, uh, the talking is the easier part always. Uh, I mean, you've heard quite a lot of plans 2017, 2018, uh, but the reality has um, been. Um, evidenced by the ordinary person in Ghana, and not just the ordinary person, but by the businesses in Ghana, is totally different from 
the high sounding promises and so on that have been made. So it's easy it's easy for minister, yeah. The finance minister is conceding some of these hardships uh, because uh, there are a few uh, U-turns for example the tax bracket thing has been changed. Yeah. Um, there's also a, a desire now to at least have some capital expenditure. Uh, are you seeing that perhaps uh, as a listening government they are now putting in place some of the things that people have been uh, asking for? I don't know about listening government, but much more about a government that is now realizing that uh, the slogans are easy to make, but the reality is totally different. Uh, if you have a situation where within a space of uh, less than two years, you've taken the public debt from 120 billion to now in September 170 billion, and within that space that you have added 50 billion, it's very difficult to be able to point to any serious infrastructure or even serious investment that you have done. You naturally have to be a little more humble. So I'm happy that at least it's dawning now and some amount of humility is coming to bear, especially more because the ordinary people clearly have not been impressed. And that, I think, is what the issue is. So this whole obsession about um, numbers and statistics when the reality that the ordinary people are facing is something that we need to really I mean, confront, confront. Now the minority in anticipation of this budget yeah. uh, forecast that there will be increases in taxes. Rather, uh, what we are seeing is a change in the tax ban which will result in a decrease in tax for many Ghanaians. No, what the minority said is that uh, we, we did tell the country in the media budget that what the finance minister came to do on the floor of parliament amounted to an increase in taxes. And the majority at the time denied vehemently that they never did so. It wasn't too long for the business community and for the consumers in Ghana to bear with the minority that what we said was the truth. So, of course, having raised those alarms, even if they had thought of raising any more taxes, they obviously would think twice because the reality is that the ordinary people have now seen through the force, I mean, the, the force that they, they came to bed during the, the, the media budget, when they mm. claimed that they were not increasing taxation, when in reality they were actually increasing the hardship and the, and the, and the, and the burden of the people. But in what we've heard so far, yeah. in what we've heard today, yeah. there aren't any increases, are there? No, but the fact is that if you've already come in media, and in media you actually came and increased VAT, which actually equivalent of 5%, mm. what more are you coming to do at the end of the year? You've already gotten the money you wanted anyhow. Mm. So the fact is, the fact that they've not brought some now doesn't mean that they've not already increased heavily the very hardship of the people. But the minority will have to admit that your forecast of an increase in this statement didn't come to pass. You should rather be grateful for the minority for having raised enough alarm for them to back away from any possible... You think that's what's any happened? Oh, well, I mean, knowing them, you, I mean, they actually want more all the time. So if the reality is actually confronting them and they have to now start backpedaling, you should rather be grateful to the minority. Vivi Kweti, I want to thank you for your time. We appreciate it very, very much. We've got several members of parliament coming through. And oh, how nice to see you. Uh, obviously, you've uh, paid attention. But yes. at this point, uh, coming out of the, uh, the chamber, how are you assessing uh, government's plan for 2019? Well, well gratefully, uh, we have... Um, uh, I won't say for the first time, but uh, I would say um, we've had a budget that is actually forward-looking and open a lot of with a lot of open-mindedness. If you are listened to the um, finance uh, minister very well, but I've heard that this budget is going to open doors for to create a lot of employment, to uh, create a lot of jobs, to open up the economy for more growth. Um, if you consider the fact that GDP growth increased so tremendously, uh, even without oil uh, uh, this year, and uh, also we had um, significant increases in um, industrial growth and also uh, agriculture, it tells you that the economy is on the right path. Uh, what we intend doing in 2019 is to now indulge in infrastructure development so that we, at least we can um, ensure that um, the infrastructure deficit which this economy has suffered over time is covered. And that is what we intend imparting into the economy. This but you say it's forward-looking. Well, you can't deny the fact that there have been some U-turns. For example, the tax bracket, which we've already talked about, that's a U-turn. Several of the uh, readjustments of your targets, uh, you know, more cons uh, conservative 
compared to uh, 2018's budget. Surely that is a, a, a government that is going in a slightly different direction, no, not so forward-looking. Th this is how an economy is run. If, if you embark on a particular uh, uh, um, um, idea or you embark on a particular project and it's not working, you would have to come back and redo it. Indeed, that is why we have the midterm budget reading. Anything that we have brought to the fore today, by midterm, if we think it's not going well, we have to change and rewind and, and, and move forward. Right. Um, coming back on this um, tax bracket, uh, 10,000 to 20,000. Yeah. It's not, it's not receding or it's not retrogressing. We have come to realize that in, in pegging that particular tax at 10,000 uh, 10, mm -hmm. was actually uh, um, um, very weighing heavy on a, 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 a certain category of, uh, of, of, of uh, NS. Is that so an we, indication that you didn't think it through no, no, no. before that's, you implemented that's, it? That's, that's an indication that we opened the net too wide. And so therefore we have to close it and now see how it's going to weigh down on, on the people. You see, don't forget that pe we, the government is not interested in just taxing. The government is not interested in making people suffer unnecessarily when it comes to taxation. We are looking at a situation where we will tax the people and they'll still feel comfortable in paying that money. But when you tax the people and you see that that particular tax is, is, is not you know, moving in the direction that you expect it to move and is weighing negatively on these people, it is important for you to just retract and see how you do it. And we have done all the integrity tests and we realize that if you push it up to 20,000, you still get what you want but in a different way and that's why we're doing this i want to thank you for your time we appreciate it very, very much and we'll keep the conversations thank going you. we're joined now by eric osei in the budget today positive um well let me say that um most of the things that were read to us today, uh, if they were to be implemented, would be positive. But um, unfortunately, that's not what we see from this MPP government. I'm saying that on the back of what, for instance, was read to us in 2018. Um, MPP only achieved about 40% of what it promised to do. And for me, that is not good. That is well below uh, the mark. Because if you see the current situation in the country economically, um, the country's economy is in serious distress. And it is because we are not being able to achieve the targets that we set for ourselves. And so for me, the government is really, um, you know, working not hard enough uh, to transform, you know, the lives of Ghanaians. Now, we've noticed that um, some of the things we've heard today are as a result of the government heeding the call of Ghanaians. For example, the change in the tax bracket. Uh, we've also noticed more the tax bracket. Uh, also, we've noted some uh, uh, more conservative targets for 2019. Uh, is this a sign that um, they are a listening government? Well, this is something that I never even expected from the N MPP government because of the promises that they gave Ghanaians before coming into power. We all know they criticize a lot of tax policies that uh, NDC initiated. And I thought they were coming to make life much better for Ghanaians because they would scrap uh, some of the taxes as they call this new sun tax. But then you, we all saw what happened, uh, increasing taxes. So if they've, they've, they've turned around to say that, look, we know that um, you know, some of the taxes that we came and imposed uh, is bringing on new hardships to Ghanaians and, Ghanaians and for that matter, you know, we'll scrap it or reduce it. Uh, it's in the right direction. To me, that's not a positive thing. Uh, positive in the sense that it's been reduced, but they should have known better because this is something that we want and um, they should have taken that into account if, even before introducing it. Now, the minority year. predicted that there will be something. All right, and uh, Michael Lee coming to us from Parliament. Though is our continuing coverage of uh, the presentation of the 2019 budget, which happened a while ago. And um, Benis Abubedu Lamsa, I've got Mr. Tremi. He's with iWatch Africa, and Anthony Morrison with the Ghana Agri Business Chamber. Quickly wrapping up this conversation, but definitely there'll be more analysis. So do stay with us. So let me ask you, Mr. Tremi. Um, 
the, the minister said the budget was focusing on recent macroeconomic development in, in around the world, globally. He brought that into perspective. Why is that important? It, it is important because we live in a globalized world. What happens in the United States mm -hmm. with, res with regards to the currency has a direct impact on our currency. We trade in the U.S. dollar, so whatever happens with that currency is quite important. Mm. And we, 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 we rely on, for instance, oil or on gold, which is determined in the international market. Mm. So any development that happens in the international market mm. has a direct impact on us, and well. it's quite important to repair. So for those to. of you who are wondering, that's your answer. Let me come to you now. We're hearing that in 2019 there will be rearing uh, for... Food for and food and jobs. <laughs> we had planting for food and jobs. Quickly, your final impressions about that. All right. So uh, government implies uh, wants to uh, make provisions for the dairy industry, which I think uh, was one of the areas we proposed to the government with uh, our meeting with the deputy finance minister. So I'm happy with that, that um, there will be demonstration centers for uh, and most of the challenges we're having with the cattle ranching mm. will be put to a stop mm. because it's very critical. Mm. Uh, our dairy industry is dying and uh, if we're going to have a rarity for food and jobs, uh, I think it, this will go to boost a lot of um, income generating activities and also create a lot of employment. So that's good for us. And, uh, but I, I'm still insistent on if you look at the readjustment of some of the things he stated, I mean sometimes a little margin of errors mm. but that's going a little bit beyond the margin of mm. error. And uh, if you have adequate data that will inform some of these um, uh, projections that we do, uh, we wouldn't be doing uh, these sort of, I wouldn't want to call it miscalculation, but some of the misprojections that we, we, we have made. Mm -hmm. um, going forward, yes, we've heard the uh, Honorable Minister talk about the rice, maize, and, and the rest. We need to see exactly what we are doing in the aquaculture industry, because okay. that is missing. The, aqua, the aquaculture industry have a lot of effects on the general uh, livestock industry because that is the protein, okay? With the uh, soya and uh, the fish meals, we get a protein that goes back to feed both the aquaculture industry, the poultry industry, the piggery industry, and even we the humans because um, Ghana uh, is about the third largest uh, consumer of fish mm -hmm. uh, products in the world. So we need to actually invest in there and make sure that we are uh, actually protecting local and oh. indigenous investment okay. as well. Definitely a lot to discuss here. Yeah, the minister spoke well over three hours. So many things. The formation of a Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, the Ghana Tree Crop Development Association, and so many other sectors uh, that are going to see some different uh, uh, authorities or bodies overseeing them. You want to stay with us here on the Joy News channel throughout the day. We'll be bringing you more analysis. I am Bernice Abubedulansa. Do stay with us here on the Joy News channel. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Thank you.